We will have scripture reading and prayer by the chaplain this morning, and after which we will pledge allegiance to the flag of our country. I am very pleased to introduce to you this morning as our chaplain, Dr. Chen Mitchell, who is the lead pastor of the Ridge Community Church in Blue Ridge. Chen is a graduate of the University of West Georgia, has a master's degree from the New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary, and his doctorate from Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary in Wake Forest, North Carolina. Prior to serving as lead pastor at the Ridge Community Church, he served as an associate pastor for 13 years at the First Baptist Church of Epworth in Fannin County under the leadership of one of my closest friends, Dr. Tom Jordan. He's joined here this morning by his wife, Amber. Would you please welcome Amber Mitchell? And they have three children, and they're also, they have with them their daughter, who we're hoping to get excused because she's got a perfect attendance record at West Fannin Elementary, Emma. Emma. Uh, Chan uh, and I share a love of the Georgia Bulldogs, and um, he, uh, his family has been very, very close friends of mine, um, and he comes from an outstanding pioneer family in Fannin County, and he has made them very proud with his ministry um, in our community. Uh, he's a very outstanding young man of God. I know you're going to enjoy him. I think he's going to be uh, exactly what we need to hear on this last day of the session. So it's an honor for me to introduce to you as our chaplain of the day, Dr. Chan Mitchell. Thank you, Speaker Ralston. It is an honor and a privilege to be here with you today on the first day of spring and the last day of the General Assembly. As Speaker Ralston mentioned, uh, my family and I live in Blue Ridge, and as you might guess, there's not a lot of traffic in Blue Ridge. As a matter of fact, I can usually make it from my office uh, to my home in 10 minutes, even on the busiest of days. Um, which is quite a qu contrast from Atlanta. And so Speaker Ralston asked me to come and to open up in prayer. I want to assure you this morning, I've already spent a lot of time in prayer just trying to get here safely this morning. <laughs> but it is a privilege and an honor to be here today among who I would consider some of the greatest and most important and most influential leaders in our state. I have great respect and have always for those who stand in the place of leadership I even have more respect, and I'm always equally impressed with those, with those leaders who add value to the lives of others by serving them as they lead. Not long ago, I was sitting in the pickup lane, parent pickup lane at my children's elementary school. The school had recently implemented a brand new system for how parents were to pick up their children following the school day. The new plan was, was much safer than the previous. However, it required a complete rerouting of all the traffic entering, entering into the school property. The new plan was met with both applause and some irritation. And so I sat, that, sat there that day in my car waiting to pick up my children and just up ahead, closer to the school building where the children were loading, stood the principal of the school. And he wasn't just standing there, he was directing traffic he was helping children get into the right vehicles. He was also talking to parents through car windows, obviously, about the new pickup system. I could tell that he was answering questions, addressing concerns, and even fielding a few harsh remarks about the new system. But the point is, he was there. Parent pickup is usually a, a task set aside for teachers, members of school staff, or even volunteers, but here was the principal the man at the top of the totem pole, the, the, the leader of the organization, and he's there in the parking lot on a hot, sunny day helping children and answering questions and doing it with a smile on his face. You know, many people 
look at leadership as an opportunity to, to get to tell people what to do or an opportunity to be in charge or to build a great organization. And that is certainly true of leadership. But I believe the greatest leaders are not the ones who see how far they can advance themselves, but the greatest leaders are those who see how far they can advance others. Each of you here serve a very important role in our state government, and you are not in that role just because you are great leaders, but because you are great servant leaders. You have invested great time, great energy, and great passion in service to the people of Georgia. You have added great value to people like me and many, many others just like me. And though the task is not complete just yet, I want to thank you for your servant leadership. Albert Einstein said, only a life lived in the service of others is worth living. Great leadership will always mean great service. I believe that some of the best instructions for servant leaders is found in the Bible, particularly in the book of Matthew chapter 20, verses 25 through 28. In this passage, Jesus is speaking to his disciples about what it means to be a great leader. Matthew 20, verse 25, Jesus called them together and said, You know that the rulers in this world lord it over their people, and officials flaunt their authority over those under them. But among you, it will be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. Servant leadership stands in stark contrast to many other models of leadership in our culture. Servant leadership does not use power or position to get people to do what they want, but rather servant leaders strive what is best for all people to gain influence. Servant leaders do not tear people down to achieve a goal or to win a victory. Rather, servant leaders focus on building and strengthening the people they lead. Servant leaders are most successful only when the people they lead achieve the victory. And now I assure you, and I know you're fully aware of this, this style of leadership will not always be appreciated, nor will it be valued often. There are times when a servant leader will sacrifice without recognition. There will be times when a servant leader will give much with very little in return. There will be days for the servant leader that seem like they will never end. Today may be one of those days. But here's the truth. The sacrifice, the influence, the works of a servant leader never return void, either in this life or the next. William Booth, the founder of the Salvation Army, he chose to live in the poverty-stricken area of London in 1885. And at that time, England was not very kind to its poor. But in 1880, the Salvation Army had grown so much that William Booth chose to uh, move it to America as well. And as we know today, the Salvation Army numbers thousands of members in all 50 states. And on one of the early anniversaries of the Salvation Army, William Booth wanted to send an inspiring message by cable to the Salvation Army posts located all over the world. He knew he had to keep the message very brief because of the expense. And as a result, he, choose, he chose to send one simple word, and that word was others. The greatest leaders will be those who add value to the lives of others. As I close in Matthew 25, there's a story of three servants. Each of the servants was entrusted with a very valuable possession belonging to the owner of the house. The story goes that the owner went on a long journey, and when he returned, he stood before each of his servants to see how they had cared for the possession left in their care. And to those servants who did well with what they were entrusted with, the owner spoke these words, Well done good and faithful servant. As the leaders of our state government, each of you have been blessed and entrusted with a very valuable possession, the responsibility of representing the people of this great state. It's a tremendous task matched only by the challenge of leading and unifying people while serving their needs. But again, the greatest leaders, I believe, will also be the greatest servants. And so with that said, I want to thank you for all that you do. Thank you for the untold hours of service that you give. Thank you for the sacrifice 
away from your family, your loved ones. Thank you for your leadership. And may these words from the book of Matthew encourage you today as you seek to lead and as you seek to serve. Well done, good and faithful servants. Would you please stand with me as we close in prayer? Dear Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to speak before this room of great leaders and great servants. I thank you, Lord, that you have gifted and equipped them to lead and to serve so many people. We know that we are never more successful than, we, than when we bring value to other people. And so today I'm asking for your leadership and your direction in the lives of these men and women as they seek to lead and serve others today. We pray that you will guide and bless their words, bless their thoughts and their actions so that others may be strengthened, unified, and blessed. And Lord, I pray that each of us will live our lives in such a way to one day hear those words, well done, good and faithful servant. For it's in your name we pray. Amen.